Welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. Now, today's film, if the thumbnail and the title and the description haven't already given you a clue, is another one of these reloaded palettes from Revolution. And this particular one is the marvellous, marvellous maps. Um, as it says, they're all matte. They're beautiful, bright colours. The question is, how well does this here £4 palette, you heard me right, £4, how well has this performed? because I've used some of the most difficult colours to create I've used blues, I've used greens, I've used purples so if you want to find out exactly how well this here palette performs my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up it comes Hey, welcome back from the intro. I'll show you this in the intro. This is the Revolution Reloaded Marvelous Mats, which looks a little bit like this. So clearly, I'm doing an all matte look today. A um, little bit of housekeeping for my channel. My films are aimed at all skill levels, from complete beginners to complete experts. I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I do ask that if you're watching this and you're getting frustrated because I'm going too slowly because of my chronic pain or because I'm talking through each step for people who are beginners, please, please use the speed button on YouTube and speed me up. Please don't whinge that my film is taking too long. Okay. Thank you. Now, my face has been washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And I use my usual antiperspirant primer details of which are linked in the description box. Right. Now obviously there's no names on these, they're just numbered 1 through 15. So what I've done, when I swatched them, I did the top row and the first three of the second row on the top and then the last two of the second row and the bottom row on the bottom. So I'm just going to pop those up on screen as I zoom you in. Just so that you can, you know, get an idea of how they look. Oh, do you know what, some days I can get this exactly how I want it and other days not so much. Right, hello, I'm back again. Right. Um, it's it's a bizarrely overcast but bright day out there. Um, I'm going to go in with the Ranimal or Animal Tapered Blending Brush number 6. Um, this particular set I do talk about in my um, Brushes I Recommend film, which is also linked in the description box. Sorry, I feel like I've got a loose eyelash or something in that eye and it's really fidgeting me. I think I've got it now. <sighs> right. Now, all I've got on my lids at the moment is MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I've not set, but it's been on there about 10 minutes now, so it's, it's nice and dried. So, I think I'm going to start off with... the bright blue because well why not I'm guessing this is shade number 10 there's a fair amount of kick up in the pan as you can see that doesn't worry me because at least you know you're getting pigment on the brush and you can go back in next time and just pick up that loose pigment so it doesn't get wasted 
Now obviously, because I've not set this yet, I can't just go straight in and sweep because it will stick and it will just look awful. So I'm going to start off by very gently patting this on. And bringing it across. I think I'll take it all the way across today. Now once I've patted it on, I can very gently start buffing backwards and forwards with it. That buzzing, by the way, is an email coming in. I'm really apologetic. I try and do this at a time when I don't get many emails. And then my emails decide to go nuts. Helpful. Mind you, it is the European voting day, so I'm guessing it's quite a lot to do with that. Right, picked up more pigment. And I'm going to repeat that as I bring this up the eye. So I'm going to pat it on initially to set it. Very lightly buff. I'm holding the brush right at the very end, so I'm putting very little of pressure on at all. And then I'm going to go in with little circular movements, backwards and forwards. Now the reason I do circular movements like this is because I'm 45, so the skin on my eyelids moves. Um, this side you'll see has got really severe deep creasing because it got pulled around a lot when I was a kid. Um, that's the eye I'm blinding. Um, so even being pulled around 40 years ago has left me with those super deep creases there that I don't have this side. I do struggle here and here sometimes to get pigment to lay down. Um, if you have something similar when you're blending, just tap your brush in, pick a little bit more pigment up, so that when you're blending, you're adding more pigment in as you're blending it, and that will help. Okay. So once I'm happy with the depth of shade that I've got there, I'm going to go and repeat exactly what I just did over on this side. Now this side, of course, I could actually close to show you. Um, now I've got deep set eyes, which a lot of people mistake for being hooded, um, because I get similar problems. I, if I cover up the mobile part of my lid and then close it, you can see I've got all that lid space there that folds back in to the crease. So I get very similar problems that people with hooded lids have, where I get transfer of colour onto the upper lid, and if I'm cutting my crease, I can't just choose to follow the physical shape of my eyeball. Um, the way to determine the difference between hooded lids and um, deep set eyes is that your static lid, if it covers any of your mobile lid, then you have hooded lids, either part or full, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. But if when you sit with your eyes open and your brows relaxed, you can see all of your mobile lid, which I can both sides, then you don't have hooded lids. And I know a lot of people say, oh, I've got such hooded lids, and you look at them and you think, no, you've got deep set eyes, there's a difference. Um, you can still follow my tutorial if you've got hooded lids. All you need to do with your eye open and a pencil brush, just sketch further up where you'd need your crease to start, okay? Now I keep sitting back and looking at it because obviously my eyes are not the same shape. Few people have absolutely symmetrical eyes unless you photoshop it and swap it over. Let's not mention a certain beauty guru that does that, huh? <clears throat> Um, so it's always best to sit back and just check that they look the same. And remember to relax your brows because I don't know you, I don't walk around like this all day. In a permanent state of surprise. So once you've got about the same depth of colour both sides and the same shape, I'm just going to use a clean microfiber cloth just to take any excess pigment off of this brush so that I can now change colours. Going with a different colour but still using the same brush. Now I did used to use a colour switch and I do still use that for tapping off into because it stops you from getting powder everywhere. But I've just find that um, the microfiber cloth actually removes the colour more effectively and it's more gentle, especially on your natural hair brush brushes which 
this clearly is not right I'm now going to go into I think shade 9 that purple because purples blues and greens are the most difficult colors to create so let's just see how good it is now you can see there's an awful lot of kick up in this one as well but as I said at least you know you're getting pigment on your brush and you can go back in and pick it up when you next need to add pigment so because this is now set I can now just go straight into the windscreen wiper through my crease like so just following the natural shape of my bone structure now if you've got hooded eyes and you've had to move your line up then you would do this wherever you've moved your line to now I'm just going to pick up the kick up there's a song there somewhere uh, and I'm going to repeat with the circular movements but I'm not going to take it all the way up the blue I'm only going to focus it on keeping the brush in contact with that line that I've just made just to to add a little depth of colour as we go up the eye but I still want the blue to have its moment now yes I've got a fallout here but I didn't really tap off very well and as I said these do have quite a bit of kick up to them so uh, if you're the kind of person that does your base first um, I would absolutely recommend you putting down some loose powder to make it easier to sweep that away now as I said I do struggle just in this corner here so I'm just going to pat some pigment in and gently move the brush around patting that pigment rather than doing the full-on circles that I've done further along and I hope you can see the difference that makes between the structure it's also very helpful if you've moved your crease line up if you have hooded lids um, adding in depth of colour anything dark recedes or goes further away anything light comes forward so by deepening this crease be it a, a real crease or one that you've created you're creating the illusion that it's further away that it goes back further so it will give you that shape that you want and make the eye trick your, everybody else who's looking at your eyes into thinking that this part of the eye is going further back and creating its own shadow. Now normally by doing this circular movement you're very very gently moving the skin on the eyelid around if I show you really slowly. See and that's why I use circular movements but I do struggle with these deep creases that because they're so deep the circle in movement doesn't work so I do have to very carefully tense that lid out and then go in reasonably firmly so I'm holding the brush further up as you can see just to make sure I've got no tiger striping left there now I'm going back to the other end of the brush, building pigment back up here. I'm not overly worried about any um, sort of patchiness here because I'm going to go in with another darker colour over the top anyway. So, yay. Again, just really lightly, very, very gentle circular feathery motions. And just check that we've got similar shaping both sides. Just deepen this outer corner up by patting extra pigment on. Hmm, I like. Okay, so I'm going to clean the excess pigment off of this brush. And then I'm going to go in. This is clean, but it is stained. I'm hoping when I do my deep clean at the end of the week, the rest of this staining will come out. So I will just wipe it over the microfiber cloth before I start, just in case there is any excess pigment I can get out of there that I missed last time I 
Let's go do this. Oh, I managed to get a little bit extra out. As, but as you can see, not a huge amount. So I'm going to go into shade number 13, which is this gorgeous teal just here. And this is a Morphe M562. And it's a very, very fine detail brush. But because it's so loosely packed, you can see it really kicks up the shadow. So, I'm going to put this right in the base of that crease and just wiggle it along. Again, if you've had to create a crease, do this right tight on the line that you created. Because we, we still want to be able to see the purple above it. And this time when we do the circular movements, I'm going to tilt my head back this side because obviously I can't close the eye, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing being blind in this one. So if I tilt my head back, when I do the circular movements this time, they're super, super tiny. And I'm literally going along the line, not above it, but absolutely bang on the line. Because I'm just gently softening the very, very outer edges so that we still see the purple and we still see the blue. But we now have that extra deep oomph just there. And I'm going to add a little bit of this colour. Just in the outer corner of my mobile lid. Just to tie that depth of colour in and add a little bit of interest. Just on the outer edge of the lid there. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this side, but obviously with this one I can actually close it to show you because this is a looser packed brush I tended to start off in shorter strokes so that I wasn't flicking the powder along but once you've got the powder down you can then start to do this and I'm just going to check on that tiger striping area we do need to add a tad more. I'm just going to do the circular blending just while I'm holding this lid tight. Do not do this with your lids if the circular movement will work for you. Or you will end up with deep circles like I've got. And I promise you, uh, deep creases like I've got rather. And I promise you they will only get worse the older you get. I didn't have them this deep five years ago, put it that way. So again, just going along the line and very gently just soften the edges of that teal. This actually would be a good point um, for me to show you one of the pictures that Gold Star Work wanted to see. If you've watched me regularly, you'll have heard me make reference to the fact that if a palette's got a purple and a teal in it, I'm automatically drawn to it because that was my wedding colours, because I wore purple and black and my bridesmaids were in teal with a black sash. Um, and I've got pictures up on my Instagram, but um, I don't think Gold Star Work had seen that yet. And she's like, oh, I'd love to see photos of your wedding dress. So while I clean the colour off of this brush, I'm going to put a picture up now, or a few pictures, of my wedding dress, my bridesmaids. Obviously I've um, put little decals over my godchildren's faces because none of them are even close to being 16. I mean, we're talking five years ago now, so... Well, what, three, four... Seven and eight ish. So, yeah. 
So I have covered their faces up. But obviously you can see my three adult bridesmaids. My dad, my brother, best men. Mother-in-law. My stepmom. And uh, yeah, my very, very beautiful dress. Now, I actually designed that dress. Um, and then found, I, I just drew what I wanted on, on on paper and found a dressmaker who was clever enough to be able to run it up for me. Um, which saved me a huge amount of money. Um, everybody who looked at it was like, oh my god, that's like a, you know, that's a 20 grand dress. And I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> because obviously where I wasn't paying the designer fees for designing the dress I was just paying for the material and the dressmaker's time uh, I actually got my dress for under 600 quid which I was quite pleased with um, likewise I drew what I wanted for the bridesmaids because I couldn't find anything that I liked found a different dressmaker that specialised in 50s style clothing to run those up and I think those came in at about 80 quid a dress with the underskirt, so... Yeah, well, what I what I forgot was that... Having a huge train behind me, which was a good... Probably two, two and a half, maybe even towards three metres. Um, and it had my new surname, Mrs. in Black Crystal on the back of the train. And um, with all the underskirt and everything, because I didn't, I didn't want the hoops, I just wanted underskirt to push it out with. Uh, and the dress itself weighed about 25 kilos, and then the underskirt was about another 3 kilos. So I was carrying around about 28 kilo of frock, which is about, I don't know what, full, full stone-ish, I suppose. Yeah, must be around about that. Maybe more. Anyway, there you go. There were the photos of my wedding dress, as I promised I would find an opportune time to pop them in for you right now. Um, I think I'm actually going to go in with a bright yellow. I know. It doesn't sound like it's going to work. And it might not. But, uh, let's see, shall we? So I'm going in with shade number two. Now, because I want really, really good accuracy with this, what I'm using, this was a set of brushes that I bought that are actually meant for doing acrylic on um, false nails. I'm just going to grab a smaller mirror and hold it down here because I can see a little bit clearer what I'm doing then. So I'm just going to... I'm not putting any extra pigment on the eyes or anything to cut it. I'm just going to see how good these pigments are and whether this yellow will actually go over that teal, which it appears to be doing. Okay. Oh, alright then. I'm quite liking this. I've gone about halfway along. Mm, okay, this side I'm going to have to stretch it. So how far did I go? I went to about there, didn't I? Right, just to show you about how much lid I've actually got folded back in that crease. Look how far that comes out. But if I don't do this, what ends up happening is that throughout the day, as I move my eye and obviously blink, powder that's just sort of sat across the top of the crease ends up falling down my face all day. Which just, I mean, if you're looking for the multicoloured freckle look, it's great. Because it gradually does that for you through the day. That's not the look you're going for, it's not so helpful. Right, just going to clean this brush off. And I think I'm going to go 
into the orange, which is shade 3 in this palette. I'm just going to pop the orange on the tail end there. And I'm just going to blend it, cut yellow on the end of my nose, good lord. I'm just going to blend it into the yellow this side. And then blend it into the teal this side. I like that. I'm going to do the same thing this side. Pop the pigment on the remaining bit of lid that had no colour. And then very lightly, buff where it meets the yellow, and buff where it meets the teal. And have a look, see if any areas need brightening up. That needs a little bit more buffing onto the yellow, I think, just there. Maybe a tad more orange, just this side here. This is what I was saying about, you know, keep going back and looking at it from a distance and just check that both eyes match. I always get a lot more fallout this side because the eyelid is significantly looser because it got pulled around so much. Um, it's one of the reasons that I do my base afterwards now. I actually really really like that. Right, okay, I'm going to clean the colour off of this brush and I'm going to pause you while I go and do foundation, brows, etc. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. So I'll see you right now. Hey, alright, I'm back. Yeah, so I went with purple brows because, well, why not really? Um, hmm. Okay, I've got a flat top brush here. Um, and I think I'm going to go... I'm going to go into that teal that I used here. So, shade number 13. And I'm just going to sort of run that up, tight up underneath the bottom lashes. Because um, one of the symptoms of fibro, that I get anyway, is quite runny eyes. At the moment, I'm suffering with hay fever as well. So trying to put eyeliner on, it's not going to happen. But you can kind of... Give the same illusion of it elongating the eye out by running a darker colour underneath the lashes and then sort of running it up the outside like that, which gives the impression of a wing and it just elongates the eye out as you can see. Yeah, I went a little bit too. Uh, as you can see, when my eye waters, that's what happens. Deep joy. Yes, that was a genuine crow's feet. Right, I'm going to go into shade number 8, which is the gorgeous green. And I'm just going to use that to soften that teal. Now the beauty of teal is if you put it next to a blue, it tends to look green. If you put it next to a green, it tends to look more blue. So, it's like a chameleon. This is another flat top brush, but it's just chunkier. It's, um, it's a brush that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette, actually. I know that, because it's got a wood effect handle. Okay, I really hope that swearing isn't picked up on camera. If it is, I apologise, but I can't do much about my neighbours, unfortunately. <sighs> That's all I need. Right. Highlighter. I 
think I'll grab Jeffrey's sarcophagus. And this is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought years ago from eBay. But lip brushes are the perfect shape to just pop up under the tail of your brow. Like this. So by highlighting your brow bone you can either use a shimmer shade like I am or you can use like a, um, a matte shade. Two or three shades lighter than your skin tone. So if you're my colour, that's going to be either a white or a cream. Obviously, if you're deeper than me, it's going to be a deeper shade. Um, it um, makes the eye look more open and gives the illusion of a higher brow bone, which apparently is uh, quite a youthful thing. Now, I always do my inner corner highlight because, again, opens the eye up, makes you look more awake, makes you look more fresh. But what I have noticed is with my particular shape eye it's very flattering for me just to bring that under and just gently buff it into the darker colour that I've got coming under the eye as well. So I kind of underline the tear duct as well as sort of highlighting it here. Now, try this yourself when you haven't got to go out, obviously. And just play around and work out what shape of highlight is the most flattering for your particular eye shape. Um, if you have very, very round eyes, that may not be very flattering at all. Right. I'm going to pause you one more time while I bung highlight pretty much everywhere. Put some mascara on, put some lippy on, do something with my hair, and I'll be back for the final look. Okay, I'm back. I really hope you can't hear the music now. Right, the mascara that I used was my Catrice Glamondal Waterproof, which is the dupe for Bad Gal Bang, but it's waterproof and it's a lot cheaper. The lipstick is Chocolate Lavender Bullet Lipstick from Oh My Glitter OMG and they now have, listen, magnetic packaging. I can't tell you how much that excites me. And I really love this kind of muted, lilac-y, browny, taupey kind of... I think it really offsets the uh, eye look really quite nicely. So, oh, I do have an affiliated code for Oh My Glitter. It's in the description box. Uh, I make a very small commission if you buy something, but you do save 10% on orders over 10 quid. Um, she's got some amazing stuff on there. Check out the Lexicon palette. Oof. Right, but what we're talking about today is this revolutionary loaded marvellous mats. So, what do I think of it so far? Well, obviously, I've only used what? One, two, three, four, five, six of the shades. So, I've used just under half of the palette, basically. Um, I did choose the most difficult colours to create. So, I used the blue, I used the green, I used the purples. Or one of the purples, anyway. Um, and they actually performed a lot better than I was expecting, to be honest. This is, um, this reloaded range by Revolution. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the rugs that I got. Don't be fooled by the fact that these are only four quid, because these are some of the best quality palettes that I've used. I've got a lot of these now. Um, I started off with the Iconic Division one, which is their dupe for um, Subculture, which I thought was amazing. Um, I got the one which is a dupe of Norvina. I've got the one which is a dupe of Soft Glam. Actually, that one's just over here, funnily enough, as I say that. The uh, Velvet Rose, if you're wondering, if you're looking for a 
a four pound dupe for soft glam rather than a 43 pound Anastasia palette um, and obviously for my birthday one of my best mates Sophie got me the deep no I bought the deep dive palette she was going to get it for my birthday but I didn't want to wait that long um, I bought the deep dive palette and I've actually I liked it so much I bought a second deep dive palette which is going into my uh, 500 subscriber giveaway so these reloaded palettes to be honest I think these are the best palettes that Revolution do better than their chocolate bar ones from the I Heart Revolution that used to be I Heart Makeup better than the Makeup Obsession palettes um, better than a lot of their collabs actually Although the Kami Kiss of Fire for, um, palette is awesome. I haven't tried his new one yet. But these £4 palettes, they really pack a punch. Um, I mean, I've, I've put them on reasonably lightly today because the day was getting brighter and brighter as I was putting it on. So I thought, OK, I won't go too heavy with it. But uh, one of my friends on here Chelsea that I've collabed with a couple of times she's produced some stunning looks with this palette and she's she's got these colours super super deep so depending on the brush you use depending on the technique you use these will actually build up and reflect the colour they are in pan which is difficult to get on a lot of palettes and it's actually really really nice to have all of these colours all matte because all too often you'll buy a palette because you want some colour but the mattes tend to be more neutral they'll be uh, maybe an apricot if you're lucky or a taupe or a grey or usually some form of beige or tan um, and then the colours are all shimmers which is okay when you're just getting into it and you're just starting to use makeup and you just want a pop of colour on your lids but when you're like me and you really really love makeup and you love bright colours um, I mean I'll, I'll use shimmers in my crease and I have done because long term viewers will have seen me do all shimmer looks um, but it's really nice to have in your arsenal a palette that is matte and has got a lot of different colours in it. I love the fact that there are two shades of yellow. You have the gorgeous bright yellow that I used today, the daffodil yellow, but then you've got this this yellow here, this, this almost, to be honest, in the 1980s that was the colour of my walls in, in the lounge in the front room. Golden Bloody Sunrise was the particular shade of paint and we had Anaglyp to paper up which is the stuff that you can just paint over. So I thought, oh great, we, we, we'll be changing the colours. No, no, every, every two years mum went and bought another pot of Golden Sunrise and painted the front room Golden Sunrise. It's not that colour anymore. But it's really nice to have the two shades of yellow. You could do a beautiful pride look with this. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. You could use the teal as the indigo. You got the purple for the violet. You could, if you're looking for a good palette to do pride looks with, this could be a winner winner chicken dinner, folks. Um, as I said, I have only used six of the shades, but I use the shades that are the most difficult to create. And I mean, I'm I'm really really happy with the result. You know, this this is comparable to the quality of the mats in Jeffrey Star's Blue Blood, and actually, it's better than the blue mats that are in Icy Betch from Tarte. So, you know, what does that tell you? Tart can't do coloured colours, you know. Can't do coloured colours, you know what I mean. Um, 
but if you're looking at this and thinking mm, I don't know I would say get it because even if you're not like me and you don't do a huge amount of colors if you are starting to get into color and you want to do a monochromatic look you've got mattes here you don't have to start off with a brown mat every time you could go in either with this warm um, kind of it's almost like a pinky taupe this shade if you're doing cooler colors you could use this apricot one if you're starting with warmer colors um, and you could use this to build your colors up and then grab whatever shimmers you wanted to use or you know loose pigments or if you've got um, for example neon pigments I mean how well would that go with that green it's going to be stunning so yeah if you haven't already got this four pound palette I would definitely say go out and get it uh, and have a look at all the other ones in the reloaded line as well because so far I've loved all of them and at four quid you can't go wrong not for that price so rambling aside I really hope um, you enjoyed this please double check you're still subscribed because as usual YouTube's back to its normal I put a film up and instantly lose between two and five subscribers I don't know what's going on it's why I haven't filmed my 500 subscriber giveaway yet because I need to be sure that I'm definitely going to stay above 500 subscribers when I, <laughs> when, I, when I make the film live so yeah please double check you're still subscribed YouTube are unsubscribing people they've unsubscribed me from people I follow so I know it is actually genuine um, and the people aren't just going oops sorry <laughs> she caught me you know it's it is genuine you YouTube is just not being nice to small creators at the moment so once you've done that and you've liked and commented and shared maybe uh, if you have missed any of my more recent films you can either go to the most recent videos or check out some of the playlists um, I've done a couple of collabs with Chelsea so if you wanted to check out the kind of looks that she does um, you can go to the photo inspiration folder find one where I mention her and the link to her film and her channel will be in the description box of the films that I've done with her um, but yeah I I really like this and I'm loving this lipstick too it's it's so light it doesn't feel like you've got lipstick on and I like that I do like that a lot right so my beautiful forever family all that remains for me to say as ever is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time bye for now